Hey, what's up guys? This is Darkroom Duels, and today I'm going to be doing a debut deck profile of my Demise slash Ruin slash The World deck. Now, I really don't know what to call this. I guess it's like Demise King of Armageddon deck, because uh, that's the main monster of the deck. But this deck is really interesting. It kind of is based around one of the first ever actually limited or hit on the ban list. Um... Ritual Monsters, which is Demise King of Armageddon. Uh, this deck is actually pretty interesting, and I was really surprised at the rarities they made in this card, these cards, because originally I think this was like a secret in the OCG, but they bumped it down to a rare, which is kind of neat. Um, but let's get straight on to this, guys, and I'll show you guys what I'm playing. This deck is actually pretty fun, and you actually don't even need the extra deck except for Real Can and Gustav Max. Like, I kind of just threw a couple of cards together for the extra deck, because you don't need it. Like, you really don't. Like, the main deck is plenty to take out your opponent um and doesn't really promote making extra deck plays so only card you really need is gustav max so let's get into this and i'll show you guys the deck profile so first off we're going to play three copies of demise king of armageddon or supreme king of armageddon um this card cannot can this card can be ritual summoned with cycle of the world it can also be ritual summoned with um end of the world but this card's name becomes demise king of armageddon while on the field or in your hand and this card uh when this card has been ritual summoned using only ritual monsters it cannot be destroyed by a battle and or all ritual monsters cannot be destroyed by battle if all monsters used through the ritual summon this card were ritual some monsters you can pay to you do not pay life once to activate this effect and once per turn, you can pay 2,000 life points, just like the original one, destroy as many other monsters on the field as possible, and if you do, inflict 200 points of damage for your opponent for each card destroyed that they control. So basically, it makes it so ritual monsters cannot be destroyed by battle. If you ritual summon it using only ritual monsters, you don't pay life points for its effect. Then you pay 2k if you don't, and then you destroy all monsters on the field except it. Uh, which is pretty cool. Ruin, um, then we play three copies of Ruin, uh, Supreme Queen of um, Oblivion. She's really good. These cards alone can like OTK your opponent really, really easily. Um, her effect is, is that she can, um, you can summon her the same way, uh, but her effect is while this card is in your hand or uh, field, uh, it's treated as Ruin Queen of Oblivion. And this card Cannot, this card makes it so all of your ritual summon monsters cannot be destroyed by uh, card effects. So for, she protects herself from demise, which goes without saying, because you need to protect, um, it would just destroy everything, which would just totally suck. Um, and then, if the, all monsters used to ritual summon this card were ritual monsters, it can make a second attack during each battle phase. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to the destroyed monster's original attack. Which is really good uh, because it's kind of like a flame wingman effect. If you guys remember that old card from GX, so like you attack into them, and then like so let's say that the monster had 2,000 attack, they're going to end up taking 2,900 because she has 2,900 attack, and they're going to take the 2,000 plus the nine, so it's 29. So then we play two copies of Demise, King of Armageddon. Uh, I haven't actually seen anybody take this deck profile on YouTube that much. But um, two copies of Demise, King of Armageddon. Basically, his original effect is that you pay 2,000 life points, destroy all cards on the field except him, which is pretty much it. So we play two copies of him. Um, really good card. I actually play one copy of Ruin, Queen of Oblivion, because I just wanted to play, you know the original ones I, I thought it would be kind of cool you don't have to play the original ruin basically she just gets to attack twice that's her only effect um if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle uh you can attack again in a row so she can attack you know keep attacking which is pretty cool um but you don't have to play her if you don't want to she has 2300 attack so she's not very big but she's she's okay um then we play two copies of demise agent of armageddon basically he Counts as uh, Demise while he's in the hand or in the field. And if he's Ritual Summon, you can tar destroy one card on the field. Um, you won't face a monster on the field. And you can target one Ritual Monster you control while this card is faceable on the field. Your opponent cannot activate cards or, uh, or effects in response to the Ritual Monster's effects, which is pretty cool. And then finally, I play one copy of Ruin, Agent of Oblivion, or Angel of Oblivion. Um, she's really neat. Um... She can make two attacks if she destroy. If this card is Ritual Summon, it can make two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. And if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Ritual Monster you control. While this uh, while it's faceable on the field, your opponent cannot activate cards and effects 
uh, when your ritual monster declares an attack. So it cannot prevent them from being mirror forced. But that's it for the ritual monsters, guys. Let's get into the regular monsters. We actually don't play any traps in this deck, I don't believe. So that's kind of a plus. So we don't have to go through those. So then we play two copies of Black Luster Soldier because this kind of is a chaos-ish deck. Usually you end with a board when I'm playing this deck. I end with a board with a Demise, a BLS, and a Ruin. And that alone is enough to OTK my opponent because I've already destroyed everything on the field with Demise. So, I mean, that's... That's the game right there. So then we play three copies of Manju of the 10,000 Hands. This card is really good in the deck because it searches either piece that you need, either Ritual Spell or Ritual Monster when it's Normal Summon. So you kind of need Manju. Um, then I'm playing three copies of Implication Talismandra. Um, Talismandra and Kandal or the last monsters that I play in the deck. Um, these cards search each other by special summoning them each other to the field. Um, also, they let you add ritual monsters and ritual spells. Um, they're actually going to release in Soul Fusion some other cards that are going to let you do that too. I think it's a book and a pencil or like a quill pen that are going to do different things too. But for now, we're just playing these. So... All you have to do to summon them is reveal a ritual spell or a ritual monster. Then you special summon them to the field, whichever one. And then you summon the other one from the deck, and they let you add a particular thing. So it's pretty interesting. I really like these cards. They're really good. They actually came out with the Demise support. It kind of went in conjunction with it, so you could kind of play with it. So that's it for the monsters. Let's get into the spells, where it really gets pretty dastardly. <laughs> I know I just said dastardly. So uh, you play one Monster Reborn because you want to be able to bring back your uh, stuff so you can do other things. I play one copy of Turning of the World. Some people don't play Turning of the World. I like one copy of it. Um, it can be used to Ritual Summon a Ruin or a Demise from your hand or deck. Uh, you must also treat monsters from your hand whose total level equal or exceed the level of the Ritual Monster you Ritual Summoned which is kind of cool and kind of weird all at once because it's a quick play. Um, if your opponent destroys your whole board and then enters battle phase, you can flip this card. I don't think you needed it more than one. I might play two of them. I don't know. I couldn't really find room for any more than one. I like one copy in, in the deck, and I love the artwork of it. So then we play three copies of End of the World. End of the World uh, basically lets you Ritual Summon, Demise, or Ruin. That's the big thing about End of the World. Uh, then we play two copies of Cycle of the World. Uh, this card can be used to Ritual Summon either Demise or um, your Demise or Ruin. Um, and then its also effect is, is that during the main phase, except the term that this card was sent to the grave, you can shuffle this card into the deck and then add an End of the World from your deck to your hand, which is pretty cool. Um, I really like this card too, because now it's like you're playing five Ritual Spells to summon it. Uh, then I play three copies of Breaking of the World. This card's like... When you summon out a Ruin or a Demise, it lets you draw a card, and then it lets you, or lets you destroy a card on the field. Also, it has the effect of that once per turn, you can target a Ritual Monster you control. Show one Ritual Monster in your hand, and until the end phase of the turn, the monster on the field becomes the level as the monster in the hand. So it can let you, if you have the little level 4 on the field because you Ritual Summoned it, or you Ritual Summoned out uh, the level 8 Demise or Ruin, you can make them 10 to go into the bigger one which is kind of cool. So I play that. If you don't want to play Breaking of the World, you can play Ritual Sanctuary instead because it kind of works more with Ruin than Demise. So I play. you can play that if you want to. I play two Terraformings just so I can search it. Um, that's kind of like my big thing because you can search as a deck thins because it lets you draw an additional card, which can let you summon more uh, Ruins and Demise, which is kind of cool. Uh, then I play two copies of Pre-Prep of Rites. Um which is uh, Preparation of Rites. You can add a uh, level 7 or lower Ritual Monster from your deck to your hand. Then you can add a Ritual Spell from your uh, graveyard to your hand. I only play 2 because you only can search the little ones with this because it only lets you search level 7 or lower. And Big Demise is an 8 and so is Ruin. So it only lets you search the little ones, which kind of sucks. Uh, the Angel or the Agent. Then I play for the last three cards of the deck. I play three copies of Free Preparation of Rites. Now, the really cool thing about this is, is you can search any of them because they all count as Demise and Ruin. 
um, which is cool, and they all are mentioned on them. But usually, you're gonna sum it. You're gonna search demise. Demise is gonna be the big one that you're gonna search off this because it lets you add a ritual spell and a ritual monster from your deck or grave um, whose name is listed on the ritual spell, which is cool. But that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. I'll show you the cards that I have suggestion to play for this. Um, it's kind of neat what you can play in this deck. It's kind of weird, too. But the main card you're going to want to play is two copies of Real Cannon Gustav Max. If you don't OTK your opponent, since um, Big Ruin or Big Demise and Little and uh, Big Ruin are both level 10, you overlay them into uh, Rail Cannon at the end of the battle phase, and then you. Um, just hit your opponent for 2k so that's the big play with real cannon so that's why you play two just in case you don't otk your opponent on the first one you get them on the second one next turn um then i play 181 uh super um dreadnought real cannon uh super dora uh then i play number 38 because i play bls and i play the regular old ruin and demise if i need to make this uh, then I play Divine Dragon Knight Felgrand, just kind of another option if you want to play it. Uh, since we play a lot of level 4s, I play the Utopia package, which is uh, Utopia, S39 Prime, and a Utopia the Lightning. You can really only make this with Manjus, so I only play them for that. Um, and then I play Tornado Dragon, just because... Baguska because it's a plan B just in case I need to make it you can make it with monster reborn and stuff like that if you need to I have actually summoned a Manju and then reborn something and then gone into Utopia the Lightning and won a game that way which was interesting um then I play a Boral Load just in case I reborn something and can go into it uh Boral Sword same reason Underclock Taker, you can you can ritual summon out quite a few monsters and then link into these if you need them, but it's so much of a minus to go into these. So that's why you don't really need them in this particular deck. So really the only card you need, like I stated, is the Super Dora and maybe Utopia the Lightning. Then um, Cerberus and Phoenix. So that's it for the extra deck, guys. You don't, like I said, you don't need the extra deck except for your... Um, Gustav Max like that's the big one that you need but that's it for the deck guys I hope you guys enjoyed this this is a pure demise king of Armageddon or end of the world deck um I really enjoyed this deck like this deck is super cool like I still remember nostalgia going into tournaments and people making like when I was a kid making demise king of Armageddon like this bad boy back in the day and like OTKing your opponent it was really really silly but I really like this deck um it's really really fun I hope you guys enjoy this deck Really cheap deck to make. But um, anyways, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to hit that bell down there so you can become a part of the notification squad. And if you are a part of the notification squad, comment down there and say you are. I really like it when you guys do. That's really cool. And give me some suggestion deck profiles for some future decks. So I will see you guys in the next video. Dark Arm Duelist, out.